All right, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we're rolling cameras here, so we appreciate you being here. It's awesome to be face to face. Uh, we've been doing this session now for two years. Uh, we talked about uh, a great U.S. Open track Wingfoot a couple of years ago and the project at Frisco that's underway uh, last year virtually. And this year, we get to talk about a pretty special project that uh, really is getting a lot of buzz in golf for all the right reasons. When you look and as we go through today's discussion with these gentlemen, uh, you're going you're, you're, you're to see some neat stuff that's happening with the game and how we're involving juniors, how we're involving families, how the course is set up and really becoming a fun atmosphere and a very social event. So with no further ado, uh, I apologize that these are in reverse order. I threw the, that curveball to them. I, 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 uh, we, we switched it last minute, but uh, I'm Rad Evans. I'm the CEO of GCSAA. Super excited again to have uh, these gentlemen and starting with Bo Welling who uh, was here last year talking about Frisco. He's back this time uh, representing TGR Design. This is a Tiger Woods uh, uh, design and Bo is uh, the lead architect uh, with TGR Design. And uh, Bo, we appreciate you being here. I want to call out real quick uh, Brian. Uh, where's Brian? There he is. Oh, okay. Uh, we've got uh, Brian Bell, who is the actual president of uh, TGR Design uh, by Tiger Woods. So thank you for being here. We appreciate your presence. And then next to uh, Bo, we've got Jason Na. Jason Na represents uh, the construction side of the project. He's the president of Frontier Golf. He resides in the great state of Arizona, my home, uh, my home, home state growing up. And then uh, next to Jason is our uh, superintendent. Everybody knows Bubba. Uh, just finished some great events and doing a great job at, at uh, Pebble Beach Links. And uh, Bubba Wright is the uh, superintendent there and was uh, part of this project. So we've got all the expertise we need to really dive into the nuts and bolts of what transpired at the Hay. And so I want to kind of set the stage a little bit before we get in, into the questions. And, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the project, um, let me just share a little bit of the, of the vision and, and how this thing transpired. Uh, the, reimag the reimagined short course experience at Pebble Beach, and it truly is an experience. I've been there. The Hay has been a fixture at Pebble Beach since 1957 when famed head pro professional Peter Hay revolutionized the concept of a short course. Again, we're talking about 1957. Hay's vision was to create a fun place. I love that word. I know Bo does too. To create a fun place where juniors, families, and friends, regardless of their ability, could gather around the game of golf. In 2021, Tiger Woods amplified Hay's vision in a new way few could have imagined with his brilliant redesign of the property. The result is a course overflowing with fun, there's that word again, including an exact replica of the famed number seven at Pebble Beach Golf Links, as well as holes designed to be played with any club. We're going to talk about that, putter included, uh, to play with any club in the bag and an additional 20,000 square foot putting course that sprawls 100 yards, yielding endless routings. So with no further ado, let's uh, have Bubba set the stage a little bit so you know where the hay is situated. Because any of, if any of you er, have ever been to the U.S. Open uh, at Pebble, uh, you would be standing on what was the merchandise area. So yep. Bubba, behind us, maybe uh, give us a, uh, a bird's eye view of what, where, what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Well, first off, thanks for having me, Rhett. You know, I really appreciate it and appreciate uh, all the support out there. But... So we got the Areola Pebble Beach Golf Links. Um, at the top left of your screen is the hay, which is on the way to our driving range, and uh, you know, kind of set in the backstage of that property. Um, you know, built in 1957, but we would tear it down and build the merchandise tents for the U.S. Open. It would be a grand entrance uh, to the property for the U.S. Open. So we were, you know, rebuilding it every eight to ten years, and and uh, then blowing it back up and having merch tents. So. You know, it was a little, it was nice we got to the point where we could actually, you know, have something we're proud of. Real quick, um, how many acres are we talking about here? 
Eight acres. Eight acres. Yep. All right. So yep. we did some pretty good work with, with eight acres. So everybody has a bird's eye view of where this sits. I'm going to uh, turn the, uh, the slides now over to our folks that are just going to kind of scroll through these ra randomly. But I want to start with, again, another question to Bubba, and, and, uh, and we'll follow up with uh, Jason and, and Bo. Uh, but Bubba, I think you're, you're the best to answer this uh, as you represent the Pebble Beach Company. company. Why, why renovate? Um, what was the, uh, wow, we just, we just need to do this. It's time, or was there uh, some thoughts behind that? Yeah, well, it was really, a, you know, like we talked about having a merchandise tent on a golf course. It was a question of, you know, do you make something that you're going to be incredibly proud of and be able to have for you know, many years to come or, uh, you know, maybe have something that's a C out there and, and tear it down every 10 years and, and put it back together. Uh, so, you know, PBC decided to really go all in on the property and, and uh, Jason was actually the guy that put it back together and, and tore it up many, many times. All right. So, um, you know, it's just been a, a fantastic project and, um, you know, something that we can be proud of for a long time. You know, it used to be you'd go from the golf course up to the range and maybe look the other way when you went past the hay, but now it's something that, you know, spend a lot of time and take a, take a lot of pride in. So, so, so I'll get to Jason here in a minute because I know you're on property um, after all of the big events doing what uh, Bubba just mentioned, but Bo, tell us a little bit about how this came, to, came into Tiger's view. I know you were a part of that discussion with Tiger. Yeah, I mean, so Tiger had been out to play, I guess, a practice round and uh, in, in advance of the Open, and his, uh, his caddy wasn't available, so John Sawan, who's the director of golf at Pebble Beach Company, uh, caddied, and they ended up having, uh, for him that day, and they ended up having a discussion about, you know, seeing this, this I guess it wasn't, in, it wasn't in advance of the Open, but anyway, he was out there playing, but anyway, this discussion happened about what's, what's going to happen with the hay, and, uh, and Tiger said, man, that'd be really cool if you could kind of do something really cool and unique, and he, he has a definite passion for these short courses, these alternative courses, and you know, we're, as you know, we're very much into this concept of, of making fun experiences for people. So that, that was, a, I think, piqued John and the Pebble Beach Company's interest that Tiger was so interested in this eight acres that was sort of up on the hill. Yeah, when, uh, when, when Tiger uh, has, has that vision and, and uh, with his great mind and design and what he, what, what he can visualize, I, I think uh, it was the right move to follow his, his vision. And, and Jason, I know you've been on property uh, kind of, as Bubba said, re rebuilding this thing all the time. So That's now right. what do you think? Oh, it's amazing, right? I, I couldn't see what was to be and to be a part of that, just unbelievable. Cause, right. Because like Bubba said, I've seen it uh, back in 2000 for the U.S. Open, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of our, we leveled it out for the U.S. Open Village and like he said, built it, did the same thing in 20. 10 and leveled it out and to see what it's become is just it's unbelievable we so, had actually we had actually gotten to the 11th hour yeah and going to put it back the way we used to have it you know uh former super chris you know it had kind of came up with a plan to say hey let's just you know make it make it what it used to be and, and really he gained some traction to you know uh put it put it make it what it is today so yeah. well so here's what we're going to do um as we go through this we're kind of just setting the stage here kind of phase one what was the vision how did this thing uh, get the attention um, uh, to where it, it, it was an uh, actual project? And so now we're moving into phase two. We've agreed we need to do this. So walk us through, because there's lots of folks out here that are looking at possibly doing a short course, turning uh, some uh, acres into a, a few holes for, for this type of a concept. But how did you all work between the Pebble Beach Company, Obviously, the architect, um, the, the, the contractor. I mean, start walking us through how all this, this came together. So maybe, uh, Bo, do you want to start? Uh, how, do you got, how you were brought into it, obviously, being attached to Tiger. That's the first, 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 uh, first thing that happened. Right. So, so this thing happened with Tiger and John, and I think it was actually part of a, maybe a foundation event or something. But in any event, Brian and I went out for the first time and met with the Pell Beach Company uh, executives and started having this discussion about what really what were their goals and objectives, what were they trying to accomplish. And, and it was a big commitment on the company's part because this was very, very valuable real estate. And, and to solve this merchandise tent, they were going to have to take other land that they could have developed and sold as very expensive lots. They were going to basically have to commit to that not being developed in, in order to be able to, to have the, the tournament support stuff there. So it was a really big decision for the company. And, but they were very intentional about what they wanted to accomplish with the facility, which was 
to very much add a new experience to the Pebble Beach experience that, that was something that was a little bit more light, more fun, but also be very, very accessible. So be accessible to juniors, be accessible to beginners, but also something that if you're a, a good player and you've come on your dream trip to, to Pebble Beach, there was something else that you could go and do. So we, we very much, from the very beginning, you know, talked about how do, how do we create this experience that really can allow a lot of different people from a lot of different skill levels to have fun. And so some of the big early decisions were, you know, where do you start and where do you stop? And as, as Bubba mentioned, it's on the way to the range. And so we very much want to capture these really big views out to the bay. And so there was a lot of collaboration, I think, between Tiger, us, the design team, you know, Pebble Beach Company, and then once Jason got involved and helped make it all reality, um, it, was, it was a very, very collaborative process, and you know, it was fun along the way. Okay. So, Jason, what, what was your number one concern going, going into this? Okay, yeah, it's, uh, we, we've got a lot of activity going on, and, and what was like, oh, wow, I, I, uh, a little, not, not necessarily surprised, but what, uh, what was your reaction? Well, as Bubba had alluded to, we got... <laughs> We, had, we were supposed to start this project in September of 19. And I think it was August 31st of 19, they're like, time out. And then we, you know, obviously said, okay, this is where things are at the moment. And I think from that moment on, I was like, oh, I mean, just an exciting opportunity, right? So uh, no, my concern was, wow, what are we gonna do with this property? And, and really, what are we gonna make it? So it was really just looking forward to that. I mean, yeah. No concerns, just what an opportunity. So Bubba, uh, smooth sailing on your end because you really don't have a lot going on with the uh, with the, the, your your job, and so all of a sudden now you get landed a, a renovation project that's pretty pretty extensive. So yeah. what what were your worries uh, as a superintendent, saying how am I going to balance all this? Yeah, well, a little backstory. You know, Chris had just left, so <laughs> I had gotten the job, gotten the hay renovation, and then COVID hit. So you're like. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, got to dive in head first. Welcome so, to adversity, right? Welcome, w welcome, you know. So, but uh, I mean, it was great. And fortunately, you have such a great team around you, you know, with Frontier Golf and our relationship and TGR. I mean, the support was, was just huge. So, like, like Bo said, collaborative was the best word to describe it. So, Bo, let's go, go back to you um, and let's get a little more detail now in terms of the goals and the objectives, obviously we've talked about and, and Tiger's vision of making it fun and family friendly, et cetera. But now I know a lot of folks out here like to get into the technical stuff. So um, tell us what were some of the goals and the objectives, whether it was the height of cut, how we're going to, you know, really make it fun, sure. um, you know, and yet still have, and they saw earlier the fame number seven with, you know, pretty significant bunkering and the entire replica. So talk us through uh, some of those objectives um, as it related to the, just your design. Sure, so I think one of Tiger's um, big beliefs of making it fun is, is using the ground, you know, he, he, allowing the player to use the ground when they play the game of golf. And he'll talk about it a lot, he'll, he'll, he'll use words like, you know, allow the ground to be your friend. And so Pebble Beach Golf Links obviously has very, very small greens with you know, rough cut up close to the greens. So not a lot of ground game sort of recovery shots around those greens. So I think one of our early discussions early on with Pebble Beach Company, Chris, um, was, you know, we want to do this differently. We want to have shortcut grass uh, around greens such that the ball could be rolled on the ground. And so that was sort of a big early decision and, and really guided a lot of what we, what we, do, we did. Um, there, there's not a huge amount of bunkering except for the replica of, of, of the seventh hole, which is the second hole on the hay. And so um, that was also intentional by, you know, again, wanting to have open approaches like you see there on the eighth hole. Um, seventh hole, there's a bunker behind the green. Eighth hole, bunkers to the left. Ninth hole, no bunkers at all. But uh, I, I, that was a really important sort of decision, and, and I think it's fun to go out there and you see people doing and playing it kind of how, how we thought and how we intended. So uh, we've alluded to this, the adversity that uh, the timing of this thing wasn't, wasn't all that ideal with COVID. Uh, with uh, just kind of, hey, we got to get this thing going. So, Jason, what were some of the constraints uh, that were identified during the planning process? So, timeline, access, weather, et cetera. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. From a construction standpoint, those are, I mean, you hit it nail on the head. We've always got the back end rainy season that we're worried about having things established. Uh, this particular site, eight acres, and we have really one access point, which was the expo pad up by the, uh, or the old merchandise tent up by the academy. So everything really had to be built 
you're painting your way out of the corner, right, and working your way out. So that was a constraint. We had a few environmental constraints pop up at the last minute in terms of what we're doing with storm drainage, which you know, it's one of those things, right? It's like, okay, we're going to have to deal with this, and then you're making last-minute accommodations design-wise from, from Bo's standpoint um, and that team. So those are the primary constraints. I think, what, to me, one of the things that was really difficult with COVID was really sort of the local regulations about what, what we're allowed to do and not sure. do. So it was nope. constant uncertainty about the schedule, and which make our life you know, sort of difficult about you know, being able oh, to get yeah. them information and whatnot. And so we deployed drones often. But I, I have to commend Frontier, because they made a commitment to make this be the best it can be. And so I remember showing up and you know, there are three Class A shapers on eight yeah. acres of ground, you know, responding to us in real time, making decisions. And it, it, so it made our visits very effective. When Tiger came, very effective. Um, and I, I really have to commend you guys because it was really fantastic, your, your support and commitment to, to, to the project in, in such difficult and unknown yeah. times. So, so, Bubba, obviously a lot of superintendents here and, and that uh, we all know in, in that profession, you get pulled in a lot of uh, different directions. And so... You know, how did you balance that with your team? Because obviously you're on, on site and, and extremely involved in all of this and yet still doing your day job. So tell us a little bit how you scheduled that. How did you, how did, how did you balance your time and, and uh, effort towards the project? Yeah, you definitely have to be pretty efficient with your time. But, uh, you know, we were up on that property quite a bit, obviously, just, just looking at everything. But, you know, fortunately, you have such a good team, such a good resource in Jason and Frontier and TGR that, you know, you know it's going to get done right, so you can hopefully focus on the rest of the property. But um, you know, it's fortunately they have a strong team. So, so let's go back now. We're again, we're kind of moving into. We're starting to build this thing. We've got shapers on the ground. Um, we've got COVID going on. Uh, we've got the vision. We know what we want to do. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit uh, about again that 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 impact with COVID because obviously. You know, Tiger, you know, needs to be a part of this. And, and was he able to come on site or how was he interacting with the project um, with all the restrictions that were in place? So we did a, a we got everything going like we normally would. And then COVID happens and, and, and it's, the, this uncertainty is really difficult. And so I remember, I think it was May 26th or something like that. We all came out, Tiger and the whole team came out for this really big site visit. And that's that's when I was like really amazed by these guys because they, they did so much in, in, in really one site visit. They had so much staff there, so they could just go and you know we made a comment on the first hole by the t you know walking around when we get back around to the first hole like it's already been everything been talked yeah. about been done, and so that that made it very easy to get a Tiger's input really up front, and then after that it was uh, you know site visits by Brian and myself and our colleagues and and, and constant back and forth with Tiger via text messaging, phone like, taking pictures like what you're seeing right now and getting his commentary. Um, so he was super involved you know, throughout the whole process, even yeah. with the challenging times we had. Definitely, I guess, a, a benefit uh, of COVID is we've all gotten a little more versed with technology and whether it was the drone pictures that you're using or, or the ability to, to do this you know, through, through use of technology. Absolutely, and we were getting drone footage like almost every day, I think, you know, which would be you know, your normal sort of overhead footage, but we'd you know, have them fly the drone at eye level, human eye level, so that we could see what yeah. was happening uh, almost in real time. Okay. So it was great. So uh, this is for Jace, uh, Jason and, uh, and, and Bubba here. Um, when we look at kind of like, you know, okay, well, we're going to have this course, and ultimately you're going to have to maintain it, and you're going to have to build it. Um, and we've got the architect wanting to do this, that, and the other, which is, is, is great. But tell us, uh, what, can you, what can you tell us about the use of technology on the project? Some cool factors, you know, in terms of just, were you sand capping it? Uh, these replica, replica holes, were you worried about how you're going to, you know, maintain them where they're just a little bit, little bit unique, a little bit different? So between the two of you, talk a little bit about, you know, your involvement in, in what you wanted to see for the after project. Yeah. Yeah, well... Um, you know, I think a big concern was, you know, Pebble Beach should do a lot of rounds, you know, 55,000 rounds a year, and, and uh, you know, we're on pace to do 60,000 rounds at a short course in a year's time. So managing wear and tear is really at the top of our, uh, our list. So, you know, working with Bo, T-size, you know, we did, we had synthetic mats that, you know, we started off saying, hey, maybe we'll use these once or twice a week, and now we're using it four times a week, you know, and, and close them off in the wintertime to only use mats as well. So 
uh, little things like that, little tidbits that, that they helped us out with. And uh, you know, I was pretty impressed that, you know, that hey, can we mow this at half inch? You know, they'd get your opinion on things, and you know, really, really helped out from our side. But it was, it was a collaboration. So, Jason, any thoughts from you on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think going back just to the beginning of the project and talking about COVID again and, and how it forced our hands to be very creative and collaborate when no one can really get together is interesting because so we broke ground March 2nd, if I yeah. remember. Yeah. And we pretty much got the shutdown right around March 16th. So we'd had two weeks to get going. You know, we're tearing up, starting the shaping, earthwork. And to Bo's point, there was no one knew really what was going to happen. It was almost by the hour you're getting new information from Monterey County. It was such a unique experience, right? Because when we move into Monterey and, and do this work, we're, we're living there, right? So our guys are there. And then they're being told no more work. They're isolated. The resorts basically shut down, yeah, right? I mean, yeah, at some point, I can't remember what date that was. So we had the whole place to ourselves. It was very unique. Um, like Bo said, we FedExed a drone out to the job site, you know, and from there, we're like, okay, you know, what can we do? Um, like the eye level flybys, I think were great. They would comment almost daily. We'd get, you know, hey, Tiger said this. And that really helped us push the project along, even though, um, I mean, the world was just crazy right. around us, right? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, as far as the replica number seven, we had actually gone out the year before. That, as soon as we got word that that was gonna happen, we had taken our robotic imaging station out there and uh, there's like 16,000 data points to recreate that green, and it's only a 3,000 square foot green. It's crazy, but um, so the amount of data we collected, and I remember crawling around the the ice plant down below, and we're doing line survey. So it was actually a lot of fun, put it that way. And, how close did you get, they? How, how close did you get it, Bo? It's pretty pretty close. It's real close. Uh, we had a few debates about the bunkering. Um, again, going back to this fun and whatnot, and you know, do we do we do it exactly, or do we make it maybe a little bit shallower? But in terms of the green surface itself, it's uh, it's pretty spot on. Okay, so uh, just, I want to just it reminded me of just of something Jason said. Just like think how what he said is that the lodge at Pebble Beach was closed, yeah. right? Yeah. And we were there, and there's nobody there. I mean, think how bizarre that is. Like the busiest bizarre. place in golf, and it's like empty. It's kind of like the shining of golf, yeah. right? I mean, it was, it was very strange. So. Well, very to your, strange. To your point of how you manage your time, you know, I really, there was nothing else to do. <laughs> you know, you're just focused on the projects and the golf course, and, you know, nobody, nobody around bugging you. So it was, it was surreal. It is a little eerie feeling. I remember uh, during COVID, I had one flight I needed to make, and walking through the Atlanta airport, and all the shops were closed, and there's two people in the concourse. It's like, yeah. what is going on? What did I, you know, pretty crazy. I can't imagine being at Pebble and seeing that. So prior to this, um, I asked some folks um, if they had some questions as well, and I received some. And so I, th this is obviously for, for Bubba and, and Jason, you can weigh in here, but a major factor in ensuring quality playing conditions is a turf grass selection. Sure. And it's always uh, debated to some, some degree, and, and uh, what uh, turf grasses were selected and what planting methods were used to establish the turf grass? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll start on the greens, but uh, you know, I'm sure you guys know Pebble Beach, we're historically POA um, in, our, in our green services. And so we made the decision to saw them to pure distinction bent grass, you know, with the idea that hopefully we can use that as a trial one for potential future renovations, not necessarily at Pebble, but on some of our other resort golf courses like uh, Spanish Bay. Um, and then the rest of the golf course is uh, higher seeded. Ryegrass was the method that we uh, planted the seed. And, and uh, we have some two acres of native fescues as well. So, kind of low maintenance, uh, low water use, fescue areas. So, any other comments on that? Any was there? Well, I think it as it relates to even the grass selection, but uh, creating the premium playing surface with the sand cap, the drainage. I mean, that's all part of it too to help you know the TGR design basically be realized, right? Those holes where you can putt from tee to green. You can't do that if you if you don't have the premium infrastructure. So let's, uh, that's, that's a good segue to, the, to this next question. And I alluded to it uh, early on, and, and as we looked at the vision, it was that, hey, you can play this course with any club. And so, um, Bo, when you're, you're, you're going into that, and obviously you've had some, some experience, experience there, but what are the nuances that you have to think through as an architect to make that actually work, <laughs> right? I mean, to play it with a putter, to play it with a seven iron, how, how do you do that? Um, and still have it be fun. So I mean, I think part of it is this commitment, you know, to to 
do the shortcut approach, approaches sort of everywhere, and, and it'll real focus on contouring and shaping. It's really a mad, you know, what we find very interesting is that when, when people play the ball on the ground, they use their brain, they use their creativity, they use their imagination. I think it's one of the reasons why Tiger likes Lynx golf so much, because his mind's constantly thinking through like how you can play this in very different ways. So we're very intentional, like this is the fourth hole, you're looking going, uh, it's one of our holes that goes straight up the hill, and that's sort of the, the ground plane as we started. If we were to see a finished picture, there's all of a sudden there's a series of mounds and rolls that you can actually use to play and, and feed the ball down onto the, the blind green in this particular spot. So that's the kind of stuff that we think is really, really super fun. Like even for a really good player, you know, all of a sudden they came and can approach these short courses and play them in a way that they might not normally play, and that allows them to have fun. So the ground contour, it was the short, was key. short answer to what you're asking. So er earlier we had some slides um, that actually went through each, each of the holes. Um, and so, you know, they're all named and, and they've got different um, elements to them. So to, let, let's talk about how that all came to fruition. So it wasn't just so, just general. It was, it was a lot of thought into each one of these holes. Yeah, I mean, so obviously Pebble Beach is a very historic place in our great game and uh, lots of great champions have come through there, lots of great moments in the game have happened there. And as you mentioned, the, the Peter Hay Par 3 course is a part of that history as well. So I think the Pebble Beach Company was very into wanting to, to sort of celebrate history and, and have storytelling opportunities as it related to what all transpired out there. And so the Pebble Beach Company made the decision to, we really like to have each hole sort of honor something that's been a part of our history. And so that's where you see these names that uh, and, and the yardages are actually dialed into the year of when that memory or oh, wow. sort of happened. Yeah. Good little factoid, didn't know that. It's pretty, it's pretty cool, you know, like Lanny Watkins, 77, PGA Championship, you know, 2000, obviously Tiger, 100 yard hole, so that's a little tidbit, so. Yeah, and I don't want to put you on the spot in terms of just uh, naming your, your favorite, favorite hole because they're, they're tied to history and so forth, but I mean, uh, overall, what are, what are some of just uh, sh share some uniquenesses to the various, various holes and, and how, they, uh, how, they, how they feel now um, I mean, as I'm, a finished project? I'm obviously very biased, and I think, but I think we did a really good job of having nine very distinct and unique holes that all sort of have their own sort of interest to them. So the first hole is short, you know, but has a you know, steep sort of um, valley bisecting the green, which creates some interesting opportunities. The second hole is the replica hole, so that's fun. The third hole it, it has a bunch of interesting contour around the green and on the green, and then four and five play up the hill and you're with your back to the water, and you think, oh, well, those are going to be some of your least favorite holes, but I'd, I'd say there's some people think they're the, some of the best holes there are, because they're just really fun and unique to play. And so, just to complete the story, we six plays up the hill, and it's, it's sort of one of ones with a bunker, and then seven's got sort of this false ridge in front of the, of the green and then eight turns around and looks right back down at the water and it's really really dramatic i think jason said it's probably his favorite hole and it probably is a lot of people's because it's one of the most photogenic ones and then the ninth hole is the one that was the bunkerless one we just looked at that has a, a big thumbprint right in the middle and so uh we get a few holes and ones there i, I imagine yeah. which uh cool. you know always is a lot of fun so yeah, yeah so we, that's a politician's answer to say i, I like them all so. <laughs> yeah I, I was yeah good, good job on that yeah. You did well. Yeah. In and down. Yeah. Jason so, Bubba, your thoughts on the on the holes and how they all came together? Yeah, I mean, to, to Bo's point, to go back to the old hay, you know, you would play you know, laterally against the, the coastline. And so you could play the whole golf course, and you would never really look out to the ocean. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, Bo's and, and, and Tiger's vision, now you have all these beautiful ocean vistas, you know, these kind of dramatic views. So really, uh, to this point, I, tough to pick a favorite, but... I think one of the cool things too, and from a planning standpoint, I think one of the things we believe with these short courses is that having them activated makes them even more fun. And so there is a, a, a venue at the top of the hill called Hayes Place, which yep. is a food and beverage uh, outlet that is right by the first tee, right by the ninth green, right adjacent to the putting course. Um, and it has this spectacular view out to, out to the bay. And, and, and you kind of come back through here, um, you, you sort of sense every hole from the spot. And so it's just really, really, I think, a fun, cool um, you know, setting. And, and, and so by having the, that building clearly wanted to have a big view, 
So that clearly meant then we wanted to play away from it and play back to it at the end. And so that led to sort of this reorienting of holes, which have these big downhill views, but then that, again, means you have some of these ones that turn and go straight up the hill, which is very different than how the Peter Hay really was. It's, yeah. The routing basically is, is totally, totally, totally different. different. Yeah. yeah. I remember gonna... when at the, at the sort of opening, I guess it was, uh, mm -hmm. Bill Brogy, the, the CEO of Pell Beach Company, just kept commenting. I was like, I can't believe these views. He's like, I've, you know, I've been CEO yeah. of this place for 30 years. Yeah. I had no idea that this property could lend these views that they're, yeah. they're here. So that was yeah. pretty cool. To yeah, 100 percent. And you know, we haven't even touched on the putting course yet. Yep. You know, what a cool addition that's been. You know, 20,000 square feet and all these different routings and hole locations. And you know, what what Bo said is, just, it's just fun. You know, people come up there and they have a great time. You know, whether it's grandkids with their grandparents. You know, young and old people that you probably wouldn't see, you know, down at Pebble Beach or, or up there and growing the game. So it's, it's been fantastic. Yeah, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that. And, I, and I'm going to uh, have, uh, I, I lost control of the, uh, the slides. Could you guys go just a little bit deeper? I want to get into now that we've, we've got some of these finished holes. I want the, the audience who hasn't seen this to, to see some of these um, as they've been finished. So maybe uh, go, go forward a little bit. And eventually we're going to get to um, even the, uh, the, 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 what's the name of the restaurant? The Hayes Place. Hayes, Hayes Place. Place. Uh, we're going to get to that. But as they're doing that, um, Bubba, another question that came in uh, from a superintendent's perspective. We know that a lot of projects, uh, or this project in particular, has attracted a lot of attention in the golf world. What advice would you give to other superintendents who plan to be involved in a similar construction project of this magnitude? And it's probably the same for, for Jason and Bo, Bo as well, as hopefully we see more and more of these projects come to fruition. Yeah, yeah, and to touch on, you know, the amount of attention at Gardner was really, I don't think any of us could have expected the amount of attention that this place has gotten. You know, we would do 10,000 rounds at the hay, at the old hay. Repeat that again? 10,000 rounds at the old hay, okay? And, uh, you know, we were putting this together, we said, well, maybe we'll get 30,000. Well, now we're on pace to 60,000. Mm. So that just tells you the excitement that it's generated and how much people love the place. Um, but as far as, you know, preparation goes, you, know, you got to surround yourself with great people. Um, you know, I was managing your time, having a plan. There's going to be so many things th throughout the project that come up that are going to be, you know, an issue or an obstacle you got to face. But you know, you're you're going to get through it just fine as long as you, you keep your head up and, and keep trucking. So uh, and have fun. You know, enjoy it. Because how many times does this, does this stuff come around? And you get to be a part of something so special. Yeah. So for sure. Uh, it was just it was just a ton of fun and a uh, great great learning process for my team and. And, uh, you know, you're going to have, as the thing evolved, you know, we started with, hey, one greenskeeper, then we did two, and now I've got three greenskeepers up there and maybe an assistant superintendent of the Hayes Place. You know, so yeah. th things will evolve, and you'll, you'll figure out, you know, how much water you're going to use, how much fur and chem, and your seed budget. And, and hopefully uh, the problem is that you have all this play and all this excitement, and, uh, you know, it's going to keep giving you more resources to maintain the place. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so 10,000 rounds to 60,000, um, and we're going to get to, uh, as we finish this up, I know I'm watching the clock here, but we haven't even talked about something that I think is pretty spectacular is the putting green, uh, over 100 yards, and the fact that it's open free to the public, and then, of course, the, uh, the, the practice area. So we're going to get to that here in a second. But same, same question to you, uh, Jason, um, you know, in, in terms of, uh, you know, just the, the, the project and and, and where do you, I, I guess, see this going? Do you have others that are that are forthcoming? I mean, is this becoming yeah, in a... In terms of short courses? Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, it's, uh, it's become a thing very quick. Um, and I think it's a great... I mean, think about it. Eight acres and look what the return is already. Um, whether you're a private club or you're looking for maybe, you know, a place just to take some overflow or people have a relaxed afternoon. I think that's the biggest thing was, you know, to Bo's point and what their philosophy is, let's have fun. When you drive by this place at any time, I mean, it's packed. And to see the little kids run around the putting green with their grandparents or whomever, I mean, it's amazing. Um, so I, I, I think that there's a trend going that way if you've got some space and, and the water, right? Let's face it, it you've got to have everything going for you. But um, we're seeing a lot of it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Bo, let's, let's shift gears now and let's do talk about those other facilities, the putting green, um, the, the short or not, not the the uh, practice area and all that sort of stuff and so maybe walk us through how all that came came about yeah so the, there's a 18 20 thousand square foot uh, putting green it's very long and linear which leads to your hundred yard plus uh, 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 opportunity, uh, putt opportunity 
Um, but it was always a part of the plan from, from the very, very beginning. And, uh, and so to some degree, that also forced sort of rerouting the hay, the Peter Hay, because we had to create this, this land that didn't used to exist for putting. Um, but that was a really fun process to go build that. Um, it's got some significant contour in it. Um, as Bubba mentioned, there are different ways they, they set it up and route it, uh, depending on, uh, on what's going on. So it's, it's really, really cool. And I think if they do have an event um, there, um, We'll have the, we built a bunker or two around it as well, so it could be used as, as player practice uh, in the future. The, the main practice facility is right across the road, is where the range is and the short game facility is and, and whatnot. So it's all sort of synergistically kind of together, uh, the practice facility, and then right across the street is, is the Peter Hay, uh, the Hay. So we're all involved, um, or should be involved in the growth of the game, and, and even though we're architects, superintendents, builders, um, and uh, we all we all need to be aware of, uh, of what's transpiring and how we can make it fun. To your your point, but I don't know that I shared this at the beginning. Um, but it's sixty five dollars for the general public and resort guest. But this is where it gets pretty cool. Juniors twelve and under play free. Five dollars for youth on course uh, members, and uh, if you want to reround it, uh, fifty percent uh, discount. And the putting course is open to the public. Um, yeah, so, so Bubba, you're you're there every single day. Um, tell us about the demographic and is is this working? I mean, are we we bring in juniors? Are we bringing families? I mean, we that was the vision. Now, is it actually happening? Yeah. Um, is that who's out there playing it? Yeah, it's it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can tell you that. But uh, no, it, like you said, demographic is a great word. I mean, you have. All, all types from everywhere, and, and hey, it's free. If you're 12 and under, it's free to come play. Go play the putting course, and meanwhile, you know, your dad can go get a cocktail at Hayes Place and maybe join you halfway through or something. You know, so really, really is getting everybody out there. It's growing the game, and hopefully making golfers for generations to come, and, and uh, hopefully some future employees for us. Well, it's, uh, you know, for, for Pebble to do that, um, I think it's setting a, setting a terrific example for others in golf to follow, because we tend to sometimes be uh, a, a little inclusive and, and, and not uh, uninviting. And we keep asking ourselves, how can we get more people to come? And, and as soon as they feel welcomed and they don't feel intimidated, and, yeah. and in fact, when I was there, you actually had putters available for people, and, and it was uh, yeah. pretty doggone cool. And, and I saw some dogs out there running around. You know, yeah, so yeah. It's pretty inviting. So, uh, I want to now, um, as we, we're going to turn some time over for questions from the audience, if there, there are some or if we've generated some. Uh, but I, I love these questions. And uh, again, there's no right or wrong answer. And feel free to be open about it. But if you had to do it again, what would you change? And, and I don't think that we need to take this as it was a mistake. But I think we continue to learn as we do these things. So Bo, let's, uh, let's start with you. If you had to do this over again, uh, what would you change, if anything? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, I normally am one to, when I get asked that question. Normally, I know we have a long list of things I would think. Oh, maybe we should have done this or that. But I'm. I don't. I think we pretty much nailed it. I'll be yeah. honest. Yeah, I really do. Great. Why don't you speak for uh, for for Tiger? Because obviously, you've had the conversation with him. He was heavily involved uh, with his design company, and so. You know, was he pleased with the final project? And, and as, uh, he says, wow, this, this, this is it. This is, this is what I wanted. Absolutely. I think he's, he's thrilled. Pebble Beach has been a very important place to him throughout his career, and it's a very special place to him. And so I think having the, the opportunity to, to be involved and, and to you know, have something that's going to be there for a long time, uh, it's been really, really special for him and, and unique. And, and again, I think it's sort of accomplished all these goals that we really set out to do, which is sort of create this different vibe and, and be accessible you know, to the folks that, that uh, Bob was talking about and sort of growing the game. And so I think all that's really, really neat. And I, and I think one of the things that I, I didn't really understand when we were doing it, perhaps, is that they, they've had, I think, 75-ish corporate buyouts of the facility. Mm -hmm. um, and but that sneakily is sort of growing the game too because what happens is it allows people that are non-golfers to come have this experience at the hay because it's not, it's not intimidating and you don't really have to be a great golfer to go out there and have fun. And so I think that's the kind of thing that Tiger's really into. I mean, I think he, he, he likes this idea of growing the game 
um, feels passionate about that and, 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 and helping to golf to, to reach broader audiences. So I think he's super proud. That's awesome. I still want uh, the two of you to answer that same question, but now that I'm looking at this picture, <laughs> Um, uh, you're now looking at seven, right? And uh, what's uh, this yeah, green? So the, the, eight. the green on the sorry, the green on the left is the second hole, which is the replica of the seventh on the on the big course. And then the, the green on the right is the is the eighth. And then right behind the eighth is the fifth fifth green, which is a hole that play, one of the ones that plays up the hill. So um, it, it's sort of hovering up above sort of the eighth fairway, but you're kind of looking down. So we can see here that uh, those are actually pretty spectacular views. I mean, that doesn't get any better than that. But it just as you were talking, uh, Bo, it reminded me of a, another question that I wanted to ask Baba because as we've talked about the different clientele, you know, folks that are just showing up and, and maybe have never golfed before and, you know, we get that, that, that angst about, okay, is this kid with the putter running around just thinking this is fun to jam it in the green and all these things that come with that. Yeah. How is it? How how has it been? And course conditions. I mean, do you, you know, how are you maintaining them and keeping up with all the traffic of what would say beginning golf sure, golfers? Sure. Yeah, I think that might have bugged me in the beginning. You know, seeing somebody <laughs> out there doing damage. But when you see how much fun everybody's having and the whole point of the project, you know, you, you definitely let that go. You say, hey, this is what it's for. If the kid's running around on a putting green and, and trips, and uh, you know, I got to plug it out later. It really doesn't matter. You know, because that kid's out there having fun and hopefully coming back and playing, playing more golf. Um, so, you know, we're in Terry, yes, it, it, it gets plenty of, plenty, plenty of track out there, but, you know, it's part of great, our job. Great attitude. Let me just, uh, we've got one question out here, but before we get, we get to that question, real quick, uh, Jason, your, if you were to do it over again, what would have you changed? And Bubba, same question for you, and then we'll throw it out to the audience. Okay. <laughs> Man, I mean, that's hard for me to... To decide, I think I would want the project to go longer because I <laughs> okay. had so much fun doing it. And let's go find you know a place for nine more holes. I mean, it was just yeah. that much fun from awesome. the beginning to end. Bubba, yeah, you know I don't have any you know big big picture change items. You know, there's things that we kind of adjusted and did after the fact, like putting speakers around the putter, which has been a really cool addition. You know, all the way out to the second tee, so you can be out there putting and listening to you know, whatever kind of music you'd like. So. So stuff like that. But we're we're, we're, we're going to get to a picture as it scrolls through with the, with the actual, the Hayes place, and you'll see what Bo described. I mean, th this thing is just sitting there, and you can see your kids, and you can have a glass of wine and, yeah. and be eating dinner while, you know, the family's out there playing and scooting around this track, and pretty much you can see, you know, mo most of the holes. So uh, with that, um, let's open it up now to the, uh, the mic there in the middle, and we're going to get some questions and some final thoughts. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Bern Bernacki. I'm with the Golf Heritage Society. First of all, we're delighted to have our team here at the GCSAA. It's a fabulous uh, gathering, and it's great to be live and in person. Uh, your presentation is very exciting. It was well put together, and I cannot wait to get there. I would like to come and play with my hickories and my classic golf clubs. So my question is this. Can we partner with you to help you make this a historic experience and bring the, uh, the sense of play from the early days of Pebble Beach to the present? Yeah. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. We actually host a Hickory Sticks tournament every year, so in, in honor of that. But uh, you can talk to me offline about, you know, coming out and playing. Yeah, appreciate that. All right, do we, do we have any other, other questions? I still have a, a one or two here, but uh, as you're thinking about a question, um, you've got, to, again, the experts up here, just make, make your way to the, uh, to the microphone. Um, funniest story, uh, I've been around construction projects and have seen uh, you all have worked extremely well as, as, as teammates um, and really kind of brought the architects, the builders, and the superintendent together and that's the way these projects should be. We shouldn't be doing them in isolation and, and really talking about uh, our various expertise and bringing it all together. But there's got to be something, uh, some, some funny story that happened, uh, uh, Bo, while you were on site or Jason or Bubba that uh, you want to, want to, doesn't need to be an embarrassing one, but there's <laughs> got to be something that was, uh, was a, a unique experience. Yeah. Anything come to mind? I'll, I'll let Bo start. Oh, I can think of a lot of things. Um, so, I mean, there was a big fire uh, one time. It was yeah. really funny, but it, it was unique. It was a big fire, and so it, it looked like a Martian landscape because the air was, like, red and 
soot was falling down. So that was something that was wild. Uh, as Bubba mentioned, he started sort of after Chris left, and we planned it with Chris. And so I actually first met Bubba um, with the mask because it was very serious mask wearing uh, when we were doing all this. And uh, and at the at the opening, he, Bubba. I saw his face for the first time. He pulled his mask down, and he had a mustache. And I never visualized the whole time I sat and worked and built this golf course with him, but he had a mustache. But, so that sort of made me chuckle. Um, and, then, and then... That was my COVID stash. Yeah. And then one, the one quick thing, which is not really construction, but I thought it was, it was funny. So Brian and I were meeting with Pell Beach Company the day before the opening, and they had this big plan of what they were going to do when people made a hole-in-one. And it was pretty cool ideas they had, this, that, and the other. And... And Brian's like, well, you know, just to warn you guys, like at Blue Jack, where our short, our short course, we have, you know, some days we might get three, four holes in one in a day. And they're like, oh, no, no, that, that, that can't be. And they're like, well, just be ready. We, you know, there, there's some pins out there that the ball's going to go in. So anyway, we had the opening, sort of small opening. And uh, sure enough, no hole in once. And so we're sitting around having lunch afterwards around the putting course. And they allowed uh, Bubba's crew to go out and play because everybody worked so hard. And so here are these guys out there. I mean, golf balls are going all over the place. I mean, these guys Come on, Bubba. Are I know. We need to all over sports. the place. And while we're sitting there having a sandwich at that ninth hole, in the span of six golfers, there are three hole-in-ones. Really? Uh, yeah. It was like, holy The guys stuff. were tearing it up. You know, they got the first hole-in-ones out there. So yeah. it was pretty cool. Were you yeah. one of them? I was not. <laughs> no, no. No. All right. Let me hear an experience. One. Funny story. Jason. You know, I, I think the experience that... I, always sticks with me is what we talked about before when the resort closed and like you said we've got pebble beach resorts like the shining to ourselves i remember sitting out with one of Bo's colleagues and had to go out grab a pizza grab a you know six pack of beer and it's just us you know overlooking number one fairway and like what are we doing here i mean it was just surreal but yeah, yeah that's probably one of the that's a haha chuckle moment after the fact yeah. awesome bubba yeah back back to the mask wearing thing you know, first time you know, having Tiger out and getting to meet Tiger, we're all masked up and, you know, we're going about our day and, and don't take our masks off the entire time. And at the end, I was kind of like, well, I, I guess I met Tiger, you know, <laughs> but, but it was still pretty cool. Yeah. You know. Well, uh, you, you do look better uh, now that you pulled your mask down. You just got to, uh, he, he, he looks okay. Yeah. He's, yeah. You know, there's nothing funny about it, but you're, you're yeah. good. I need the mustache back, but other than that, I'm doing all right. Awesome. <laughs> well, uh, if there's no other uh, questions from, from the audience, um, I want to thank personally our panelists um, today. They um, have not only done a terrific project, as you can see here, and uh, Tiger, uh, thank him for his vision. And, and um, you know, what, what we're really doing for golf is, is, is needed. And, uh, you know, we were on this boom with rounds up being played and when we look at the demographics of those that are entering the game, a lot more females, a lot more juniors, and just think what could happen um, when they're given this opportunity as well uh, at, at other states and other, other facilities throughout the country. I think this thing is a, is a magnet for, for growth, and uh, I commend each one of you for what you've done, and I encourage each one of you to go out, and if you're a, a club or a facility, um, that's thinking about doing this. I know these gentlemen would be more than happy to uh, get with you and answer any questions and, and try to expand the reach into this great game. So uh, with no further ado, let's uh, thank uh, Bubba, Jason, and Bo for their time today. Unless there's any final comments. We good? No, I'm good. Just thank All good? Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah, you thank bet. You thank much. you very much. Appreciate that.